it's hard to believe that 72 hours ago, I was still up my almost silent mountain, loading up a 20-year-old white truck, no roof, with my cases. And as I was saying my goodbye to my darling Selma, and I'll explain a little bit more later who Selma is, I asked her a question. I said, in another 72 hours, I'm going to be standing on a bandstand talking to a group of people. So please give me your advice because I'm going to be talking about my love and passion for Turkey and a little bit about my book, Tales from Turkey. And her wise words were, Miriam, every single day we all get up and we do what we have to do and we do our best. So on a Thursday evening, when you're standing there, remember, you are doing your best and that's all that matters. And of course, it's always an emotional um, time when we have to say goodbye and I come back to the UK. And I have to say, when she said that to me, there was a lump in my, in my throat. Back to Selma. Selma is my helping hand. And it's the very first story in, in the book. And I've now known Selma 10 years. And she's been a huge influence in many of the other stories and tales from Turkey. Going back to Pink Pines, as Chris has already mentioned, we arrived there in 2004, 2,000 feet up a mountain in a traditional village that remains 30 years behind the West. And after a few shaky starts, I began to embrace the simple life, the culture, and the Turkish language. What grabbed my heart and what grabbed my attention? Well, there was never a plan to write a book about Turkey. There was never a plan to even write a book. But from the very first time I set foot on the mountain, an actual fact on Turkish soil, I was blown away by that kindness, unconditional warmth and hospitality from not just my neighbors, but from everyone that I've ever met whilst being in Turkey. Bear with me. This healing, calm, natural environment that I was living in had spectacular views of the rock face that swept down to the valleys that were green at certain times of the year. And it actually took me back to paintings of biblical times, unchanged for hundreds of years. The vibrant colors of, the, of wild plants, of herbs and flowers, all contrasting with bright blue skies. And I was surrounded by colorful crops of vegetables grown by the villagers that basically are in the ground in the morning, and by lunchtime, I'm eating them. At 7 a.m. most mornings, I walk in silence, either down the valley or back up the mountain. And occasionally, there's just one bird singing. And as the morning progresses, all I hear are the sounds of farm animals as they get on with what they have to for that day. And then there are the funny, comedic adventures and experiences that I've been privy to. And you really couldn't make it up. For example, carpet cleaning in the mountains is one of my stories in the book. Um, here in the West, we would ring up a carpet company when we wanted our carpets or rugs cleaned not in Turkey and not where I live. My lovely Selma grabs every single floor covering in the house. We're having breakfast and they come flying over the terrace, thrown onto the ground, 
as she grabs a hose and starts stomping all over it as if she's jogging or crushing grapes. Um, and that's just one of the stories and one of the, 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 the you just couldn't make it up. Um, all of these things have drawn me to Turkey and have given me this passion and, and love for this country. And then the inspiration to write came, Tales from Turkey. After the first three years of living up the mountain, I was certainly managing my health better. I was stronger, I was more focused, and I was more relaxed than I had been in many, many years. And by 2009, I'd actually completed my first book of short stories but I did not believe that I could actually publish a book. A wise lady that I had met some years before, who was tuned in to me, one day she appeared at the house and said, Miriam, why are your, is your work gathering dust in boxes and sitting on a hard drive? What are you afraid of? Well, in truth, I was lacking confidence. And I didn't know that I could handle my words going out into the public domain. They were my babies for a few years, and I had nurtured them. But in early 2012, I decided to start writing a blog. And the feedback was so positive, that gave me the impetus to say to Chris, by hook or by crook, I don't know how I don't need to know how, but by the end of November 2013, my book, Tales from Turkey, will be published. November the 21st, 2013, after 17 years of being in the shadows, I stepped up, not a bandstand, but a little podium that was specially made for me, and I talked about the journey of publishing Tales from Turkey. Ahmet and Selma's husband have shown me how to walk my life again. And they're now my dearest, dearest adopted family. So who would have thought that by taking that leap of faith to Turkey, I would find my niche and a new career in writing. And the icing on the cake is because I've been based in Kent for the last 12 years. In August 2013, I've started to make core bonds in the world of Kent business again. And my world is opening up again. And it's very, very exciting. I'm also truly grateful for the help, the support, and the advice I've received for the last months. And I see that many of you are in the audience tonight. So thank you. The Irish are great storytellers, so I'm told. And we love to hear a good story as well. And now I really feel compelled to write every single day. Will I do it again? Of course I will. And just to say finally, I really feel privileged to be standing here this evening and talking a little bit about my story. And I would just like to thank you all for listening.